Good afternoon, fellow artists. Welcome back to our art class. Today, we are going to start learning about value and how we are going to apply it with a pencil in order to create a value scale in artwork. Value scale is normally used to apply to images to make them appear as three dimensional. With the example that you see here laid flat in front of you, I have a pre-filled value scale that you yourself will be working on to create as a practice run before creating your artwork for this unit. As you can see here, I have circled that I am using graphite. Graphite is another fancy word for a pencil. The best type of graphite to use for an art project of this caliber, uh, especially when it comes to portraits or still life, are the ebony pencils. If you don't have this at home, a handy dandy wooden number two pencil will work as well, uh, or a lead pencil. But uh, if you want to go the extra mile, Prisma Color Ebony are normally a pretty good brand of pencils to start off with if you're an artist who is very interested in working on the value scale and making things appear three-dimensional. Now in this practice run, we're going to start from dark, from our dark side of our square here, and work our way to the light here, the white area that we see, or the light gray. So we will start off with an empty template here. If you don't have one of these at home, you may just draw out six squares and fill those in from there. I will also be using these little guys here. Uh, normally when you get them fresh out of the packet, they have a white tip. This one has already been used. These are called tortelloins. Uh, in other words, a blender or a stump. And these are used to blend values in art to make them look smooth. And I will show you what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and grab an empty template here. You can also purchase tortelloins at any craft store here in a package. They're pretty cheap. But if you don't want to do that, another option in blending is to use a Kleenex or a soft tissue paper here. Um, or you may also create one with just regular paper you have at home. These guys are literally made out of paper and rolled up to look like a pencil. So that's what those are there. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our ebony pencil. And in the first square, we're going to color in completely dark. Now, the reason right now I am not currently coloring it in really dark and pressing hard on the pencil is because I don't want to damage the pencil. I don't want to break the lead off right off the bat. So I'm going to start fairly dark but not quite black. And then I'm going to layer another portion of dark color on top of what I already have. Now, if your square has some white areas here, this is where the blender tool comes in, your stump or your tortelloin. Instead of blowing off any residue when you have it on your paper, make sure to take it and just shake it off somewhere. Um, if you blow on the residue, it tends to smear things. So do be careful of that. I'm gonna take my tortelloin here and I'm going to apply a gentle pressure on my square and I'm going to blend things to where I where I no longer have any more white showing through my square here. It's going to be a pretty dark square. Let me shake that off somewhere else. And there is my darkest dark so far. The next square I'm going to create, and it is going to be slightly lighter than this first guy here. So I'm gonna go in, and again, I'm going to apply some light pressure onto my pencil here to fill it in, remembering that this guy has to be slightly less darker than the darkest square. So I'm not going to fill it in quite as dark because 
Once I am done filling this guy in, as you can see here, I'm going to go in with my blender and I'm going to start blending in my pencil marks. And you can already start to see the difference between the blender and the pencil there. Um, the blender smooths things out while the pencil has some texture to it. Both in my eyes are fine, but if you are going for any skin tones, um, especially through portraiture on the grayscale, you definitely want to have some smooth transitions. So uh, using your blender is a helpful tool in that situation. And once you blend that in completely, there is your second darker shade. And from here, I'm going to keep going lighter as we move along. So this one is not going to be nearly as dark as the last one I just made. I'm just going to fill this in. And with my stump here, I'm gonna go in and blend in areas. And for the sake of time, I am going a little outside of the lines, but as you can see, um, this blender can be pretty strong. It leaves marks on its own if it is not cleaned off from the use of before. There is my next lighter one. And as we go along, I'm going to apply less pressure to my pencil and make a light mark but I'm also gonna try to fill in some of these areas here so it's not so sketchy looking. I'll take my blender. Now, one thing I also want to make aware is as you're working on a project of this caliber, again, a still life or a portrait, you want to avoid placing your hand on top of where you are shading simply because things are going to smudge. You may also end up with things like fingerprints or oils from your hands that transfer onto your paper that give your drawing an unpleasing look. So definitely be careful in that regard. Again, really light pressure on here, not really touching the paper much at all. And then I'm going to take my blender guy here. And as you can see, everything starts to get lighter. Until we get to our final square here. Our final square. I'm simply going to take our unclean blender guy here. And I'm going to fill in as much of my square as I can with the residue that I have from my stump here. And that's going to be my lightest light. Remember, instead of blowing that off, you wanna shake off that residue. And here is our value scale with an ebony pencil. With our smooth transitions there, see how a lot of that texture disappears when you apply the blender tool. Uh, remember, if you don't have something like this at home, uh, tissue paper will work just as great um, simply because you can just go in and smear things around. See how I can even smear things outside of uh, my area there. Um, if you use something like a piece of paper that's rolled up, again, you can roll it up pretty good as well. Make it look almost like a pencil in a way or a crayon. And you can use that piece of paper itself to blend in areas. The only thing I do stress is that you do not use your fingers or your hands. Again, the reason being because we carry oils on our fingertips, the oils will stick to the paper and you will be able to see fingerprints all over your drawing. So that is why I'm suggesting that you use the Kleenex tissue or a scrap piece of paper you have laying around at home. Well, that is all I have for you. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Otherwise, I hope you have a great time practicing. Uh, this will build your skills 
as we move on to creating a still life and a portrait. Thank you very much and have a happy time creating.